Hello, my name is Alan Ryan with Woodcraft here in Dayton, Ohio. Today we're going to talk to you about and show you how to properly mill lumber. Now most of the lumber that we buy is not going to be flat, it's not going to be straight, and it's not going to be to the right thickness. So what we have to go through is a process of how to get there, and that's what we're going to go through today. Milling is the process basically of flattening your material, getting it so that it is square across the end of the flat, it's flat across this way, and we're to the right thickness. Now it has to be done properly because move, wood will continue to move on you. If it's not done properly, you're going to end up with a beautiful board like this, nice and square and everything, but as you can see, it's not anywhere near being flat. Consequently, your project won't be very well built. Most people feel that they can simply take their material and stick it through a planer and end up getting it nice and flat and square and true. The only problem is the way a planer works, it only imitates what's on the bottom of the board. Consequently, again, we have this board here. It's nice and flat. Somebody put it through the planer. I've got a twist in the board, and it still comes out nicely thickness, but with that exact same twist. So in order to fix that problem, we have to go to the joiner and get ourselves a flat surface first. Okay, the three basic machinery pieces of machine that you're going to need is in your shop is going to be the joiner so that we can flatten our material first before we put it into the planer, which we then get to our right thickness. We'll go back to the joiner and clean an edge up. We go over to the table saw, which we'll then rip and cross cut to our final width and length. Okay, remember, before we start doing anything, the first thing we have to do is to make sure that you read and understand your operating instructions on all your power equipment, and most importantly, ears and eye protection at all times. The first step in the milling process is to review your plan so that you've got a cut list of material needed. You're going to cut that material down and adding six inches to compensate for snipe, which is basically a little deeper cut at the front and the back of each individual board going through your planer. This is waste material. Now, on your commercial planers, you'll have snipe. On your small lunchbox planers, there won't be as much, but still, you need to have that extra amount in there for cutoff and for waste. Okay, now let me go pick up this piece of material here. <clears throat> now, if you notice, it's a little bit longer than, no than normal. In this case, what I've got it set up for is I don't want to have it any shorter than 18 inches for it to safely go across the pieces of machinery. Anything shorter than that could tend to fly out and cause injury. Now, if you have a board that you need that's, say, 12 inches long, you know, put two pieces together that are short so that you end up with one long piece that you can comfortably send across your joiner and your planer. Okay, I've got my joiner set up now to take a, a cut that's not real super deep because of the fact that this, plane, this board has a cup on the back of it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is grab a pencil and run across here a few times so I know where I'm, I can read my individual cut. I've got push sticks and I've got hand holds here to keep my hands completely away from the joiner head while it's spinning because it doesn't care whether it's a board or my fingers and I really don't want to put my fingers in there. Okay, here we're going to get ready to start up. Okay, 
Now I've got my board flat on the bottom. So what I want to do now is I want to get myself a square edge that's 90 degrees to this. So I'm going to flip it over, set it up here on my joiner, set these things over here. I'm going to use this, the fence, keeping this at 90 degrees and keeping it flat to the fence and then send it on through. Okay, now we're going to go and over to our planer. First thing we got to do is to set this planer up to make sure that we've got enough thickness to send this through. I've got a caliper here. I'm going to check my widest spot, which is about one and an eighth of an inch thick. So I'll adjust my planer to that. Oops. Okay, unlock it. Come up to just a little over, under one and an eighth. Okay. Pull out my pencil and make my cut there so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to get ready to send this through the planer. One thing I do want to talk to you a little bit about sending wood through a planer, and that is you have to read the piece of material and right across here, you've got your lines for your grain pattern. Okay, at this point, if I'm cutting it, I'm going to be feeding it against the grain pattern. So as, I, as I'm cutting it, it tends to want to chip out. So I actually need to send this through in this direction so I'll have less chip out on my piece. Remember I talked to you about uh, the snipe of the planer. The very beginning and the very end of this is about two and a half to three inches of uh, material that's a little thinner here. It's hard to see it, but you can definitely feel it with your finger here, running your hand over it. And when you get into a finishing process, this will be really accentuated by the finish. And the way to eliminate that is to basically cut off your piece you know, at your snipe area. Now, your machines can be set so that you'll have not that much of it, but there's still a little bit of it no matter what you do. We'll continue to plane this down to get it all the way across here. All right, I've now got my thickness to where I want to be. So now what I have, I've got one clean edge that we did from the, uh, the joiner, and I've got my flat, my thickness. Now we go over to the table saw, and we're going to rip off this here to the right length, okay? Okay, now again, I'm going to rip this thing off here. I want to set this to seven and a half inches, and I'm going to add just a little bit so I can go back and do a final cleanup on the joiner. So it's seven and a half. Add just a little bit more. Okay, we got our saw blade up. I've got a riving knife in order so I won't have any kickback. I've got my push block. Now one of the key things about a table saw is how you push the material through it. If you constantly keep pushing at an angle like this, you're going to end up with a bow cut. That happens on a regular basis. That's why we add a little bit more material so we can go over the joiner and flatten it down one more time. Okay, now let's go ahead and get this started. All right, now we're going to go back, go back over to the joiner. 
and take one final pass on this edge right here to clean up. I got a little bit of burn. I've got a pretty flat edge, but I just want to get that one thing cleaned up, okay? All right, now over here to the joiner. And remember, we're going to cut this edge off here, just trim it up. But I'm going to take just a little bit of a trim, of a cut, so I'm going to take a very, very slight cut on the joiner. Use this against the fence, the fi uh, against the fence and we'll get ready to go here. Check for square. Have a good square to the ends. Now, line that up like that. You can see the difference between unmilled and milled. Remember, go through your planer for or your joiner first, then go through your planer over the table saw to get your flat edge on the other side, which we're just imitating the bottom, and then from there, clean it up. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions on wood milling or on project building, go down to your local woodcraft store and talk to our expert associates. They'll be happy to help you out. Again, thanks for watching. Look for you next time.